for the time. Yeah, this is tea time. Making a difference. One cup at a time. So be sure to grab your tea, grab a seat, and tune in to Miss Liz. Tea time. Tea time. Making a difference. One cup at a time. to tea time we are back it is afternoon tea time and i am joined with my amazing friend supporter and sister of sacred hearts rising that's right i have jennifer grenier in the house this afternoon with me and we're going to talk about relationships why because we're all we're in a friendship we're in a relationship and that we just need some more information out of our on relationships and i have the good amazing jennifer here that's going to share because she is an entrepreneur, relationship coach, marketing strategist, best-selling author, homeschooling mom. She's all of it. And we're going to get her in here. And she's going to spill some good, strong TEA with all of us this afternoon. So before we get all of that going, we're going to do the disclaimer. We're going to do bio. We're going to do all that good stuff. And then we're going to share this team, subscribe to the channel, get everything going. And we're going to have a good old TEA with some sisters this afternoon. And then this evening, we'll be closing up with Erica Scott. So stay tuned for that. So disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time live show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content, content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forth dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All tea time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussion for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It's significant to know that the show is engaging in discussions, forms only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmisslizz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that this show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and will see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all tea time shows are done on Thursday in 2023 at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Or a rescheduled tea time is done on a Monday or Tuesday. So now let me get a little bit of Jen bio out here. And then we're going to get Jen to pop in here and she's going to spill a good tea because I see her in the back there pondering on her tea. So she's steeping her tea and getting ready for all of you guys. So Jennifer Grenny is a heart centered woman with a passion to inspire by sharing her story with authenticity to allow individuals to feel seen and heard and to guide them through the change they desire for a better life. She is a passion. She is passionate about helping people discover their joys and to empower them to pay it forward. Jennifer does this with grace and gratitude and the guidance of God. Jennifer is a co-author in the best-selling anthology series, Sacred Hearts Rising, where she shares her about her grief, abuse, and triumph. Jennifer is equally dedicated to her faith family career and business partners. 
Jennifer has been a personal development in relationship marketing and online business strategist and coach teaching and coach teaching women how to step out of their comfort zone and live their dream life for over five years. Jennifer is a child of God, a wife, a mother, and a grandmother. She is a homeschooling mom, as I've said earlier. Alongside being an entrepreneur, she enjoys spending time with her loved ones, reading, journaling, gardening, traveling the mountains, and being beside the water, which we both enjoy doing. So I'm going to get Jen in here, and I'm going to sip on my tea. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you for having me, Liz. <laughs> oh, it is an honor. I, I have been so excited to have you. Like we have had such a journey together that we're going to get into later in the show. But I want to start off, Jen, how I start off with everybody. So who is Jen as a little girl and who is Jen now? Jen, Jen as a little girl was a shy, quiet, um, pretty reserved little girl who... Um, probably kept to herself, but had big dreams, big ambitions, and had a really loud voice inside of her that was like, ready to share just needing the tools on how to share. And uh, where I am now is speaking, sharing my story of everything that I've been through, everything that I have learned um, through the years, all the trials, all the triumphs, just being that real authentic self to myself, but then sharing that in a vulnerable way um, for inspiration for other people. So Jen, how did we meet? We met through <laughs> my husband, actually. <laughs> it's you such were a curious lie. about uh, yeah, you were curious about the about the business that I was doing, and but God had bigger plans for us, and it led us down a path of meeting actually through writing, um, rather than through working and becoming um, business partners together. We became sisters, and uh, through through writing our stories and and sharing our stories with others. Yes. So Jen, you you say we met through writing. And we share almost similarities in our stories, but they're completely different. But we actually connected through our stories, uh, reading and getting the inspiration and motivation to share more, you know. And you've always yeah. been that big supporter of pushing me and and that. And you've always had my back and said, let's go, let's go, let's go, you know. And I finally got to meet you, I believe it was in 2018 in, uh, in Edmonton when I came for the summit. Was it 2018 or 2019? Yeah. Yeah. It was one of those years. I believe, it was 20, I believe it was 2018. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's when we went to the, uh, the event in Edmonton and I met you in person. And then that's the following year is when I decided to write my first story. Or Yeah. I think it was later in that year when I uh, shared my first chapter in Sacred Heart Rising um that was actually published the next year that's what happened so let's get into the books first and then we're going to get into the relationship we're going to get into your business as well for anybody that would like to know more about jen's business the website is on the screen so you can check that out while we're going live if you have any questions leave them in the comments or you can directly email or message miss liz through my messenger on my facebook page and i will get those questions out to jen uh so jen let's talk about book three because you were in book three first and then book four. So I got book three here. So for anybody that would like to go and grab a copy, you can grab them. They're on Amazon, uh, Sacred Hearts Rising. Uh, and Jen, your story's in this book. So can you share a little bit about yeah. what, what your story was in this one? Um, in the first chapter that I wrote in book three, um, it was my journey from the age of 13 to the age of 30. In that time, I don't want to give too much away because... Um, I want you to also go in and pick up the book and read it for yourself and read the other stories that are in there as well, because there is so many stories of not just women, but men and, ch and children as well, um, of just overcoming in that resilience in their own life and their story to be able to give someone else hope um, through whatever they're going through. There is so many stories in that in those books that it'll resonate with somebody in one way or another. 
but my particular chapter was just on that journey that I went through between the age of 13 and 30. And let me tell you, it was a ride. It was, <laughs> it was a ride. There was um, the birth of my daughter, the death of her father, um, abuse, um, trying to, you know, that path down a dark, dark place in my life. And then coming out and finding a light. And that was through the grace of God. Um, I spent a lot of time in prayer and asking for direction and, and that guidance of, you know, finding healthy relationships um, and not continually keep going down a path of, of that repeated cycle of, of abuse and wanting more for my, my daughter's life and my, and my life. So Jen, I'm just going to read a sentence here on the, the last page of your chapter. It says the year I turned mm -hmm. 30 was my turning point. So what happened at 30? It was like an aha moment. I, I had a wake up call and I realized what was happening in my life up to that moment wasn't serving me and it wasn't serving my family, wasn't serving my daughter, the ones around me, my loved ones. And I had to make the change. It had to stop somewhere and it had to stop with me. Um, so I had to be clear on what I wanted in my life and, and no longer, you know, I had to set boundaries um, to protect myself and to protect my daughter and to protect the, my future. Like I didn't, I didn't know the, of course, the direction my life was going to go in, but where I was then to where I am now, it's like night and day. Right. But it had to stop somewhere. And it was just a realization of like, I've lived for 30 years and I want to continue living, but the path that I was going down wasn't healthy. So Jen, what got you to write in book four? Which sorry, I, you wrote in book four. So let me hold up book four. Okay. So what got you, what, what got you to write in book four? Book four was more of my journey of grief and I have, I don't know, I, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to hold myself to a higher standard, but I feel like the amount of grief that I've went through in my life has far outweighed. I mean, there's people that I know that are way older than me that have never experienced the amount of grief that I experienced in a short time, um, right from a young age up until just a few years ago, um, there's been numerous, numerous passings in my life that have really shaped me to be who I am today because I've learned something from every, every one of those um, relationships that I had that are no longer here with me, but they still hold a place in my heart. You know, so I take those as teachable moments and um, life lessons that I can then apply for myself and my family. And I, I cherish those relationships very near and dear to my heart for sure. So in your chapter in that book is called Through Heartache Comes Strength. Mm -hmm. How did you get that, that title? Because through those, like I said, through those relationships that, um, you know, through the passings of, uh, it's not just people that, that I talk about in, um, you know, and I even share about living grief in that as well, because it's, I, I feel it's even harder. Um, that's my opinion. Um, and it's something that I really, I really strive to learn from, like, I don't dwell on the losses. I don't dwell on the grief. I move through that. Um, in my own time, of course, I mean, everyone's healing journey and grief is completely different. It looks different. The time wise is different. And I have compassion for every person in that respect, because every, every single person will go through grief in one way or another in their lifetime. And that's their journey. And I took that and I used it as a way to dig deeper. And how can I take my pain to then help someone else. But I had to I had to go through it and move through it and find tools and different ways to heal myself to then be able to share that with others. 
to be hope and inspiration for others as well, right? Well, and grief has a way of making us stronger. You know, a lot of people look at grief as weakness. It's not. It's it's everlasting love that continues on, you know, and it gives us it gives us a whole new life. Like it changes us. We have to learn to live without the loss of that person. And like you said, Jen, living grief, you know, the grieving the living is hard that's something we both uh we both live with you know and it's hard to explain to uh, others that don't understand it that don't go through it you know the the grief of, of someone who's passed we know they're never coming back but the grief of somebody who's living they're right here they're present but it's like they're gone but they're not so what has your grief taught you jen Grief has taught me to really live in the moment and cherish every single second as it passes by because it can be taken away in an instant and really live my life to the fullest with the people that, you know, I I hold near and dear to my heart, but I'm, I'm not chasing. I'm here. I'm me. If people want to be in my circle, the, you know, like Liz, her table's open, my table's open as well, but there's boundaries there. And it has taught me to have boundaries. It has taught me to protect myself and protect my loved ones, but it's given me the strength in, I'm not in this alone. There's so many other people that are going through this. And I lean on, I lean on God for that support and in time of prayer and in time of, you know, the, the heaviness, I give it to him because it's not mine to carry. And I think that's something we both have uh, together is the our strong faith in God. You know, mm-hmm. um, we turned we turn to him for strength. And you know, there's days where we're both just struggling, and we're just like, okay, it's just a really hard day. But guide me, just guide me a little bit. Give me a little bit of push. You know, and, and I feel that's what our relationship has done as a friendship, you know, is we push each other. We kind of look out and, oh, there's something not right. Like, you know, uh, you know, just like I can tell when Jen is off and there's something bugging her. So, and Jen can do the same with me. She's like, uh, we're not playing that game. You know, <laughs> we, we, we got each other here. We're just like, what's going on? So, Jen, yeah. I want to get into uh, your tea. Because I think it's a good time to get into your T, and then we're going to get into the work that you do. So if I give you the letters T-E-A, what words would you give me today? So for T, I'm going to go with teaching. For the E, I'm going to go with empowering. And for A, I'm going to go with aspire. Oh, she really was back there working it up. (laughs) I do talk to my guests before they come on, so I, I I know what they're doing. So, Jen, do you want to tell me why you gave me those three words? So, I teach by example, and I try to lead by example. Um, I'm not perfect by any means, and I don't live to preach that I'm perfect by any means. I have faults. I make mistakes. I do things, you know, but those are all teachable lessons for myself. And then they're also teachable lessons for other people, too, right? So, I, I really do what I do with passion and with heart and to be able to teach that to other people, it's, it's meaningful to me. And, um, it's for a purpose. Like, you know, I've went through everything I've went through in my entire life to be the person I am today and to be able to give those little pieces of advice or those little nuggets that have helped me along the way in whatever way they are, that's, that's a teaching moment for me. Right. So, if somebody comes to me and says, well, how do you do this? Or how do you do that? How do you have so much joy in your life after so much loss? Well, my teachable moment for that would be, I lean on God for that, you know, or how do you do this? Well, this is the tools that I use. I had a friend reach out to me yesterday asking me if I've ever been to therapy before and if I could give her some recommendations. And I did that, you know, these are tools that I've used in my life 
to be able to then pass them on. So that's a teachable moment for myself. So empowered. Yeah. Why that word? Empowering, same thing. I think it goes hand in hand with the teaching. You know, I, I didn't go through what I went through in my life just to sit on the chair and do nothing. I'm here to sh share my story, to be able to empower other women, you know, and men too, and children as well, to stand up for themselves, have a voice, speak what comes from their heart, and be that true authentic self to themselves to, to then be able to give that to the world. You know, we all have a story, and through our stories, we can empower others in whatever way. They're, the person that's there watching you and taking it all in is going to get it in their own way. Yeah. Well, it's in their own way, in their own time, right? And that That's something yes, exactly. that, you know, we can't force anybody to understand it or to, you know, put themselves in our shoes when they don't even understand mm -hmm. it. You know, sometimes you just got to let it go. You just got to say, you know what? Okay, yeah. Lord, what am I doing with this? And let it go. Yeah. You know, you're never going to get aligns, an answer sometimes, right? Yeah. He aligns those relationships when they're meant to be. When someone is meant to come into your life, they will come into your life. When the, when someone's meant to go out of your life and leave your leave your journey, they, that, that relationship falls apart. And it doesn't mean that it's fallen apart forever. Maybe sometimes there's things that need to be worked on on either party, both to get, you know, so be it. But it, <laughs> the Lord works in mysterious ways and he brings people together and he takes them apart at times in your life when you unexpectedly don't even realize where they're coming from, you know, what their story is, but that alignment is there for a reason. Right. Yeah. He connects the dots and he cuts the dots and then he reconnects the dots at a later time. You're like, Oh, I thought this person was gone out of my life. And then five years later, this person's coming back and you're like, Oh, why? What did I learn now? Right. Right away, yeah. we go on that defense mode, right? We go on to, oh, yeah. what are we doing with this again? You know, but sometimes yeah. people change. People want forgiveness. People yeah. realize that they've done wrong and they just want to come back and mend. You know, there's nothing wrong with That's mending. True. You know, uh, my exactly. first story in Sacred Hearts, Jen, that the one that you read was my broken porcelain doll. And that's all I've done is just, I, I keep mending a piece of, you know, uh, yeah. and... Yeah. That's what we have to do in life is we have to mend, right? So let's get into your A. Your A is Asper. Aspire. 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 Yeah, aspire. I can't even talk anymore. Like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so why that word? I mean, like that shocked me. Why that word? Well, it stood it stood out to me in in the respect of back again like my story can then help to direct someone else to just be whole again you know what i mean for a really long time i did not feel whole and you know to achieve something more in life than just being is I, i've had people in my life that i've looked up to to you know have that inspiring kick that I needed at times, you know, like when I was feeling really low and I'm like, well, if this person could do it, so can I. She's no different than me or he's no different than me. We're all just human. We're all just trying to get through the daily stuff in life. So if they can do it, why can't I do it? What's stopping me? And then it gives me that time and that reflection to dig and do the work. And then there I go, you know, so if, if I can give some sort of little piece of hope for someone to do something more in their life and really flourish to be who, you know, their God given purpose, we're all here for a reason. So what's your purpose, right? So Jen, I want to get into your one word because we're doing your words right now with T, but I want to get into your one word. I asked you one word to describe yourself as an individual and you gave me gracious yeah. no. by that word. Yes, I did. <laughs> that was actually a really tough one for me. I'm like, one word about myself, what? <laughs> it is a hard thing. People ask you one word to describe yourself. Ooh. It's so actually, 
I actually reached out and I asked some people very close in, in my life, if you could describe me in one word, what would it be? And they brought me all these other words. And through all those words, I come up with gracious because I was like, okay, yeah, I can see that in myself. I can see that in myself. Uh, you know, I was kind of treading a little bit there. And I mean, I do everything from my heart. And sometimes I wear my heart on my sleeve and then get shattered. And, and I know there's a lot of people that live their life like that, you know, and, and so for me, and my one word being gracious, it's I'm a giving person, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve, I have a big, huge heart. My heart has been broken many times. But I always find a way to repair it and keep moving forward. And just with grace, right? You know, through the grace of God is how I live my life. And I just, I want to be able to give back in all different ways and just have that grace with myself and with everyone else. Because I do know that what someone else is going through, I may not understand, but to have that grace with them, um, I can still love them, even though I don't have to walk with them, right? And so gracious was my word, because it ties into so many different things. I, I like that you said that, Jen, you know, we can still love people, but we don't need to walk with them, right? We let them walk and find their own journey, their own path. And sometimes it brings them back to where we are, you know, and sometimes yeah. we just have to let them go. And sometimes we're like, Oh, why, why couldn't you do that? Why, you know, I, I, you know, I thought this was your thing and, and, and then you you surprise me and you do this and you do that. And I'm just, you know, I think yeah. things happen in life that we're, we're kind of like thrown back, right. Especially when we wear our hearts on our sleeves and we have a question here for you, yeah. Jen, uh, because of your loss at such a young age, do you feel that that has driven you to who you are today? That's a big part of it. Yes, it is. Um, I, it's, it's given me that perspective on life of like, life can be gone in an instant. And it's, I, I mean, there was, there was a really windy path for a long period of my time where I was trying to discover who I was. And I felt like I had to be this certain person because of the things that were happening in my life. But then there that alignment wasn't happening and there was more that just kept coming and coming and coming and until i kind of like dissected all that other stuff and created those boundaries and stuff like that so so loss at a very lo young um age has really helped me to blossom into the person i am today for sure 100 percent. i think and it makes us heart centered by losing at such yeah. a young age, whether it's loss yeah. through abuse or loss through someone mm -hmm. passing, you know, yeah. it really makes our hearts whole yeah. inside, right? The inner child really gets protected of our little hearts yeah. and we yeah. wear everything on our sleeves and we just want to give, 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 give until we mm -hmm. fall apart. And then we're like, why did we fall apart? Well, because yeah. we keep giving and people just keep taking right so and like and that's why i asked you what your grief taught you and you said it's, it set boundaries it showed you how to set boundaries and i think that's what grief does for a lot of us is it shows us that we need to set boundaries we need to say you know what i'm gonna grieve for a year you might grieve for two years but this is my boundaries let me do it my way let me serve the way i want to serve you know and again the fate the the god-driven power of that's within us because yeah. we went through so much at such a young age. Right. Uh, yeah. And I love your chapters 13 to 30. Isn't there a movie like that with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis or something? Oh. Or, or was it like freaky Friday or something? I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of the mother and daughter switch places or something yes. that I had yeah. seen. Yeah. That's what, that's but what your title. I was like, I see. That so movie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah. I don't know if that's the exact title, but I do know which one you're talking about now that you say it. 
I'm pretty sure it's Jamie Lee Curtis, and she has a yeah. rock star daughter, and she turns into the little rock band player, and the yeah, and then she turns into the mom, and yeah, yeah. it's a good movie, guys. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's just where my mind goes when I'm thinking <laughs> of things. I'm just like, there's a movie, there's a song, there's something. Let's bring it together. <laughs> I, I'm just that weirdo, guys. Yep, Miss Liz is one over to Cuckoo's Nest, uh, and that's a good show too, and a good book. <laughs> So Jenna, <laughs> I want to get into, you do a, quite a few businesses online. I do too, yeah. Yeah. So let's get into the the send cards and then we'll get into your home okay. business. Okay. So uh, I am a relationship marketing uh, coach with Send Out Cards and I absolutely love this company. I've been with them for almost two years and uh, the mission behind um, the company is, it's near and dear to my heart. Um, when the company was first introduced to me, I was like, oh, this is amazing. And uh, what it is, it's personalized greeting cards that you can, you can design and send um, to anyone, right? And the mission behind the company, it, the founder, he had, um, he was moving from his his hometown and he was moving away and <laughs> yeah that's one of the cards that I had made for Liz and sent it to her with some of the pictures when I went to Ottawa and it was so special and that's what I love about it it's it's to act on your promptings right when somebody pops into your mind somebody pops into your heart you want to say thank you you want to say happy birthday you want to you know just any anything just say hello right um we have these prompt things all the time, but how often do we actually act on it? And what I love about it is you can actually put the app on your phone and you can send a card right from your phone to the person directly. You can send just a card. They have gifts that you can attach. It's really cool. But the, the founder of the company um, was moving and he, you know, he, he was like, Oh, I should say goodbye to my brother, but he actually didn't. He drove off with his family and what have you. And, um, a few few months later, he got a call that his brother passed away. And he felt really, you know, he was torn inside because he didn't act on that prompting to say bye to his brother. And it touched me in a really, really personal way because my sister, same thing, she went on, she went away on a holiday and she never returned home. She passed away on that holiday and I mean, I miss her dearly every single day. Um, but really to tell people that you love them and you're thinking of them and you care about them anytime. It doesn't have to be for a specific reason or a specific holiday or whatever. And so when I came across that company, I'm like, oh, yes, I love this. I love the mission behind it. I love everything about it. And it's super easy and affordable. And why not? So I was like, I'm going it, I'm going for it, I'm going all in. And I and I've been doing sending cards to people just randomly or for specific occasions for specific reasons um, for almost two years. And who doesn't love happy mail? Like we get all these things in the mail that make us sad and want to crawl in a hole. But <laughs> when we get something of appreciation in the mail from someone else just to say, I've been thinking of you, like how does that make you feel? <clears throat> for me it makes me makes me feel so happy like my heart is full and I know that the recipients of the cards that I send their hearts are full too so our yeah, world needs more of that because when I received my first card it made me cry I was just like oh my god like how did she do this how did she put these pictures in there because we had such an amazing time when Jen came down to Ottawa she was one of my guest speakers when I was uh, a uh, yeah. leaders for change for sacred hearts and jen came down and she was one of my speakers and we had a blast like we went uh, i showed her all over cornwall and so everything and uh, i want to share this story this is one story that really sits with me when jen came to visit we picked her up at the airport in ottawa and we and we were downtown down by the parliament and everything and jen looks at me and she tasked me and she says what is that and I'm like looking all over, what, what am I looking at? What am I looking for? And she's like, what is that thing on the street? And I was like, the black squirrel? And she's like, I've never seen a black one. 
<laughs> I've seen brown and gray, but I've never seen black. <laughs> and, uh, and that, it makes us chuckle all the time. Me and Paul, we always chuckle when we hear, you know, and then you had told me a couple, a few weeks ago about Joel seeing one. So I was just like, oh my God, that just reminds me of Jen so much. <laughs> like the black squirrel. Every time I see a black squirrel, I'm like, hi, Jen. <laughs> Yeah, I've actually yeah. named them after well, you now. Right? Yeah. 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 And it's building, it ties that back into building that relationship and that friendship and that connection, right? It's something that, I mean, years later, we still talk about that time, right? And that's what relationships are about. It's building those connections. And, you know, we, Liz and I don't talk every single day. But when we do talk, we can go like months without talking. And then when we talk, it's like we talked yesterday. Right. So I think both of your businesses align together, Jen, because with the cards, mm -hmm. it's personalized, it's passion, you know, it's heart centered. Yeah. So your online business, what type of business yeah. is that? The, our online business is just a coaching and mentorship um, business where we teach people how to use social media and just put themselves out there and share their story and be authentic for other people in hope and inspiring someone else that they can work online too, right? Um, it's not absolutely for anybody. I mean, there's work involved. It's not like you just post a picture and away you go and your business grows. It's not like that. But my job as a mentor and coach is to teach people how to do that, right? I, I set up that time one-on-one. -on -one. There is actual training that um, it's step-by-step -step video module-based um, training. So it's, it's easy. And what I love about the community is it's such a diverse community. When I first started, I think there was around 3,000 people in that community. Now we're approaching the 200,000 mark, right? And they have been a light of inspiration for me in some of my darkest days. Um, when I first started my business, my sister had just passed, passed away just prior to that. And there was many days that I just sat there reading all of their different posts of, you know, inspiring um, their own stories, right? They were inspiring to me and it gave me hope, right? And so that's what I love about it. And so now I'm, I'm able to then... Um, be that be that light for somebody else right to know that i'm no different than anybody else i go through trials and triumphs just like everybody else but what kept me up at night you know wanting something more in life wanting that change for something different but i had to take matters into my own hands i also wanted to help my husband contribute to the household finances and stuff like that but i needed something that i could do from home or have that flexibility to be able to like still work and still provide, but be there for my family through some really, really tough times in our life, you know? So that's what I love about it. And I love, I love those connections through the three years where the world shut down. We were still growing. We were still building our businesses. We were still connecting. Yes, it was through, you know, online platforms like this, but we were still growing and we were still connecting and st still keeping that human connection alive, right? So Jen, we have another question yeah. here for you. Okay, let me yeah. just kind of put this together. It's like a little paragraph here. So do you feel that building you relationships? That? Yep, I'm, uh, I'm just putting it all together because it's a paragraph here. So do you, do you feel that, yeah. uh, how do I want to word this? Do, 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 do. do you feel that online business can make a strong relationship? Relationship development. Develop. Yeah. So do you feel that online business it creates a personal development, the strengths. Yeah. Um, the, the online business develops personal restraints. Is that what it said? Yeah. I would not, I personally, I wouldn't say that because 
when you're putting yourself out there, like we talked about earlier, um, and you're building those connections, the people that are aligned to you are going to be the ones that are going to be connecting to you. Um, yeah, sometimes we have some people that come in, it's not for them, and that's fine. Um, they're not they're not tied in for the rest of their life. I'm just here as um, a, as a teacher and as that connection to then show them and provide them with the information for them to make the next step if that's what they choose to do, right? Um, so it I wouldn't say that it causes restraints um, personally because it's really their choice, right? I'm just providing the information and the tools. Oh, they're saying, do you find that they're, okay, I, I think they're bilingual, so they're, they're writing half French, half English here. Do you find that it causes tension to work online, like with relationships, like you working at home and your partner works somewhere else? Do you find that that causes a commotion? Uh, um, a restraint in the relationship. Okay, repeat that again because you're breaking up just a little bit, so I missed the last part. Okay, so from what I'm understanding here, and I'm sure they're going to write back, do you find that there's a restraint caused by somebody working at home with a home business and somebody who's working outside of the home, but they're a couple? Is there a restraint there? So I'm, I'm oh, guessing so that what they're trying to ask, Jen, is if they worked at home and their partner worked outside of the home, does it cause restraint in the relationship? That's what they're trying to say. No. That, okay, no, no. Because um, a lot of people, when they're coming into the online space, them themselves are even working outside of the home. So they're also doing their online business as a side hustle, right? To build okay. more because... We all know the times that we live in, um, the, it's expensive, you know, we need to really work hard to have something to live for with, you know, if we want to retire, but when you find something that you love, it's not even like going to work. You just want to continue doing it. And so we have people in the community that are 18 to 80, you know what I mean? There's, there's no restraints. And when you, when you're there and your husband or your partner or your spouse or your wife, whichever way it is, if it's, if, if it's the gentleman that's coming in as a business owner and the wife is working, the, it doesn't cause the restraints because you're still working together. Um, I started this business with my husband and he was working full time. Then he came home for a period of time while we worked on some things together and just personally and stuff like that, that was going on in our life. He was home for three years and then he went back into the workforce again. And we complement each other well. You know, he's there. He's supportive. He um, helps me when I, you know, gives me that boost when I need it. Sometimes he gives me that little bit of uh, a kick in the butt when I'm slacking a bit, you know, pick it up, do something, you know, uh, that sort of thing. So I wouldn't say there's a restraint there um, from what I've seen. I can't speak for everyone, but what I've seen and the the business relationships that I've um, developed over the years, there hasn't been restraints. Yeah, they say they, they're sorry. Don't be sorry. They're coming in from France. So they're trying to... Okay. Yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> double language. Uh, so, Jen, you yeah, said that no, uh, okay. Joel, you and Joel worked this business together while he was home for a bit. So do you encourage couples to do this? Uh, that's just completely up to every individual, right? That, that if you want to work with your spouse, fine, give her, have fun, do it together. But if you want to do it solo, it's, you can do it solo too. You don't need that. You know, you don't need a spouse to be able to do it. Right. And my husband is also French. So I understand like he grew up in a, in a French home and stuff like that. So, um, shout out to the people in France watching <laughs> but yeah no i i you don't have to it, it's completely up to you your own um lifestyle whatever works best for you right so jen what got you into coaching the witch story I, all i heard was coaching <laughs> so what got you into coaching 
what got me into coaching. Just that passion of connecting and then teaching what I've learned to other people, right? So that's been just using what I've learned to help me grow and then being able to uh, give that back to someone else and, and to that to that respect, it's coaching, right? Using the tools, using the training, using the knowledge that I've learned in all different aspects, business and personal, to then be able to give it back to somebody else, provide them with the tools, right? We got we got a couple more questions here for you. So, Jen, what is your favorite scripture in the Bible? My favorite, my favorite scripture in the Bible is uh, "Can do all things through Christ." Wow, that would that would surprise me. That question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a question here for homeschooling. How does how does that work? Do you get sent to courses or do you for apply which, for courses? I think they want to know how to start homeschooling. Homeschooling? Well, it depends what, what area of the world you're in because there's different homeschool. Like, like for me, I'm in Alberta. So there's you can unschool, you can homeschool, you can, you know, there's there's different. We're a little bit more flexible in Alberta different places have different rules and it depends where your child wants to go. Um, also, so I, me personally, I would just say, look at what area of the world you're in and what resources you have. If there's a community there for you, so you're not alone and what the regulations are for that particular place that you are in the world. If your child wants to graduate and receive a diploma and go, go to post-secondary, there might be ways that you have to go about it there. Um, every place is different. So it really, really just determines where you are in the world and what the regulations are and where your child wants to go. Some people here, I know, just completely unschool up to grade 10. Then they choose by grade 10. Lots of times their child knows where they want to go kind of in a direction in life. So then 10 to a 12, they put them in those specific courses to prep them for post-secondary. So it's really, it's really kind of individually based on where you are in the world. So what got you started with homeschooling, Jen? The pandemic. <laughs> My daughter, uh, she went to public school. She graduated high school, received her diploma um, years ago. My son started off in public school and then the pandemic came and everything was being, um, you know, all the kids were being sent home. Everybody was being sent home and we were being told to stay in our homes. And he at that time was just finishing grade three. So I was like, OK. And then the next year it was a little unsure of what things were, which way things were going, you know, in the world. So we're like, OK, well, let's just do it this, you know, homeschool this year. And we actually went through the school and did almost like correspondence through the school for grade four, grade five. Um, we we kind of unschooled and we just did our thing and we life um, we life schooled basically. We we educated him through our lifestyle, right? Through homesteading, through different things, traveling, world experiences, um, all of that kind of stuff. Last year, we did have uh, a program that we used, which was amazing. So there was, you know, your core subjects, your math, your science, your social, your language arts. And there was a Bible study incorporated along with life skills and some different groups. You know, he was in some different sports camps and different things for that interaction and socialization and keep him active, you know, so he's not just sitting at home all the time. And then... This year, he's in grade seven, and we haven't really started our school year yet. We kind of start it more into October because September is kind of our, you know, get back into routine month, and we have a lot of harvesting that we're doing and preserving and stuff like that from our garden. So he's very much involved in that, and we incorporate that into our homeschool journey. So it's a little bit different all the time. That sounds really interesting because you harvest a lot. 
I seen all the yeah. cucumbers you had, and I was like, I wish I was closer because I'm a cucumber. Uh, a cucumber a day keeps the belly away, guys. I'm telling you, try it. <laughs> it actually keeps your belly away. <laughs> so I want to get into yeah. some of your hobbies that you do, Jen. So you, you do some gardening, journaling, uh, traveling in the mountains. You travel a lot with Joel when because he's a truck driver, so you travel a lot. So what has been the biggest adventure for you so far in life oh wow in my whole entire life or... your whole entire life i'm going big girl <laughs> well i i am i love to travel so anytime i get to travel um but it's kind of i don't know i'm a homebody too so i love being at home i love being in my space and in where like this is my comfort zone right so i love this but i also love to travel and sightsee and experience other things in the world so anytime i can go drive through the mountains or go by the water or any of that sort of stuff i'm just completely in my happy place um but i also love to travel with my family so when i get to travel and do those experiences with my family beside me um that's pretty special to me so my first big trip was from Alberta to Newfoundland. That was oh. years and years ago, and I did that with my daughter. Um, I last last fall, I took a trip with my daughter, my son, and my grandson. We drove from Alberta down to Las Vegas, Nevada, and back. That was an epic trip. It was beautiful. And then just going on little trips, like I, my husband took me to Yellowknife, um, Northwest Territories. He took me to Whitehorse, Yukon. We did that with our son. Um, just doing all these different little trips, you know, taking little family trips here and there. We went to go um, into BC from Alberta to go see some waterfalls. We did that with, you know, our children and stuff like that. So any, any of those. I mean, I like solo trips too, but I'm more for if my family can come along and experience it with me, then I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah. It's always nice to bring somebody along, right? I don't like, I like traveling alone, but I find it's more enjoyable when you have somebody with you to experience the same thing. Cause you can say like, look, 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 look at that fall waterfall. Look at that. And you know, look at that tree. Look at that rock. Me, it's all driftwood. So like Paul says, he's going to put driftwood around my home to stone when I'm gone. So, um, uh. <laughs> I grew up camping and my husband grew up camping as well. So we do a lot of camping with our family and our, you know, our children and our grandchildren. So that's really special to us too, is just keeping those little traditions going with our kids so they can experience that. And then in turn, if they so choose to do that with their children too, they can. And, you know, going on the boating, going boating, going fishing, taking the kids tubing, just experiencing, you know, camping and, whether it's roughing it a little bit or if it's doing a little glamping, that's fine too. You know, it's all fun. It's all an experience. And it's what the kids remember because I remember doing it way back till I was a little girl. And same thing with our children and grandchildren as well too. So it's just making those memories and spending time together. Yeah, you guys have to come and camp up this way. So we One can day. make some memories One together, day. right? <laughs> Our goal so, is to buy an RV so we can travel and work at the same time because my business travels with me. So I don't have, I'm not stuck in one place. All I need is my laptop or my phone and I can work. So my business will follow me wherever I go in my RV. <laughs> so Jen, you say that you go to the water. Why do you go to the water for? I don't really know why I, I love water. I'm just... Well, maybe it's because I'm an Aquarius. <laughs> <laughs> that might have something to do with it, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably but, the reason why. <laughs> but no, I, I, I am totally grounded when I'm in water or by water or I can hear the water. I'm just calm. It calms me. So even through when I was going through um, really heavy grief, I would find myself having like showers or baths and just like really just like it was like a cleanse for me i would go into deep thought and i would just release those thoughts and then i would just visualize all of that going down the drain whether it was in the shower or washing down the drain in the bathtub um 
Water is very grounding for me. It's cleansing. I'm glad that you brought it back to the grief because grief should be something that we experience through the flow of water, through the flow of wind, uh, snow, rain, you know, uh, and water does calm the soul because it gives us that quiet mm -hmm. time to kind of reflect and, and move, right? It's just the movement. So, yeah. and, and that's what I see with you, Jenna, is that the movement, you know, and I've seen yeah. so much growth in Jen since I've met her in person and her coming here in person. So we both went to each other's ends, but I just see the huge transformation in you, Jen, from the first day that I met you. Uh, you really have grown a lot and you have been one of my biggest supporters out there. Jen was also mm -hmm. one of my forward writers for book three. And I wanted to bring, she's in book three, a, a equals awareness. And the reason that I put her in that book was because I wanted the awareness of friendship. I wanted the awareness of relationships, keeping, staying connected. Like Jen said, we don't always talk all the time, but when we do talk, we talk. So, and I knew that Jen was going to come on tea time with relationships because Jen is a person who mm -hmm. likes to build relationships. She, you have such a big heart, Jen, and you, you do put your heart on your wow. sleeve. And I appreciate that. So for anybody that would like to reach out to you, Jen, how could they reach out to you? Thank you. Thank you. You're so dear. You're so near and dear to my heart. And I cherish our friendship um, for all of, all of my days. And I am forever grateful that our paths were aligned for sure, because we're both destined for so many things in our life. And even through collaborations of, you know, of me sitting at your table, sharing tea with you, um, we're both we're both speaking from our hearts in hopes of that inspiration for someone else so jen if anybody wanted to reach out could you read out your uh, website for the audio listeners uh, my website is um https uh <laughs> backslash backslash uh uh, or is that forward slash? Okay, yeah. And then www.jenniferandco.ca. So it's www.jenniferandco.ca. And uh, so that'll take you to my website. And uh, you can find me on Facebook, Jennifer Grenier. Um, send me a message and uh, I can connect you to any anything else that you that you might be interested in. Um, yeah. So Jen, before we wrap up, I want to get into your favorite color. We're going to wrap it up with your favorite color because your colors are amazing. I asked you your favorite colors and you said sunrise and sunset. So do you want to tell us what <laughs> color is your favorite color? Because I know what sunset and sunrise is, but for the listeners out there, what colors are your favorite colors? Well, my growing up, my favorite co color was always purple. I was so drawn to purple. I loved purple. I loved pinks. I loved blues. Um, as I as I um, become more grounded in life and and go through so many different things and emotions and feelings, um, I love the colors of the sunrises and the sunsets. So the oranges, the yellows, the the reds. Um, and then with the with the nice you know soft blues in the backgrounds from the sky and it for me that is it's it's a representation of a sunrise is a new day god has given me a new day to share my story share my life with with the world and a sunset is the representation of you know being grateful for that day and everything that has aligned in in that day you know so those are my favorite colors is sunrise and sunset just for those reasons of you know no particular reason for the color itself but just the meaning behind the sunrise and the sunset and the happiness and the joy and the you know the courage and the connection and that those colors bring 
Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jen. And it was an honor to sit and have tea with you, you know, and get to know you a little bit more. <coughs> For any of the viewers and listeners out there, if this tea resonated with you, please share it with a loved one or a, a business or a coworker who might be down and under looking for a coach to pick you up. I recommend you check out Jennifer because she does work from the heart. So if you're looking for somebody who's heart centered, Jennifer is the girl for you. And I will see everybody back here tonight at 7 PM Eastern standard time for the last tea time of this week. And it will be with Erica Scott and she'll be coming in with creating consent, a consent culture. So we'll be talking about the consent of your body. So the yes, the no, and the maybe. Uh, so it will be a triggering tea time. So the trigger warning will be up for that one. So I will see everybody at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you'd like to know more about Miss Liz, check out Miss Liz's website, www.misslizsteatimes.com. You can find all of these tea times on there as well as on my YouTube channel and all of my podcasts and platforms as well. So Jen, again, thank you for joining me and thank you to all the listeners and viewers. I Truly appreciate all of your support and I can't do it without you. So I will see everybody tonight at 7 p.m.